Fish are some of the most diverse animal factions in all of evolution life. The fish faction is the most numerous, diverse and ancient out of all vertebrates, which means that there are a lot of different play styles, each suited to individual classes. One of the most infamous builds of them all is the piranha, a fish believed to be capable of skeletonizing practically any player that gets in their way, big or small. That definitely isn't unwarranted, yet there is a lot more to piranhas than meets the eye. In this video, I will be analyzing the strengths and weaknesses of the piranha, so that you can determine whether you want to play this build or not. In terms of individual base stats, piranhas aren't exactly well-rounded in that regard. Let's start with their most obvious strength, their damage. Relative to their size, piranhas can deal some serious damage. Their teeth are great at ripping off flesh, and since piranhas do prey on larger builds on occasions, they naturally lose quite a few teeth throughout their playthrough. To mitigate this potential weakness, piranhas, like sharks, have replacement teeth always ready, but unlike sharks, piranhas don't replace their teeth immediately after losing the previous one. This can be a double-edged sword, because while it does conserve resources, once the number of missing teeth begins to increase, it could become harder to deal damage, which can be extremely detrimental to the player. But I digress, this video isn't about the pros and cons of replaceable teeth, so back to the piranha's damage stat. Despite their fearsome reputation, piranha players usually prefer to attack bills in smaller weight classes, such as insects and smaller fish. Contrary to popular belief, piranhas are actually omnivorous, with plant material comprising a portion of their diet. This decision can be useful in increasing the player's versatility, because while plants don't offer nearly as much XP as animals, they are easier to find, which could prevent the player from starving during times when prey is scarce. For defense, piranhas don't have any special individual traits that really aid in this regard. While their scales do help keep bacteria at bay, they aren't that useful at blocking attacks from builds not in the microscopic weight class. On the contrary, it's actually the enemies of the piranha that are spending more XP on defense, with certain fish builds evolving harder scales that are more capable of shielding themselves from piranha attacks. But back to the piranhas, because of their shortcomings in defense, piranhas live in shoals to better protect themselves from their many predators, such as river dolphins and caimans. Not only does this strategy aid in defense, it has a lot of offensive capability too, something I will talk about later in this video. For other stats, there's not much to talk about. In terms of intelligence, there isn't anything worth noting. In terms of stealth, piranhas are mediocre at best. Most piranhas are colored to blend in with their surroundings, with a few exceptions. The red-bellied piranha has a brightly colored underside, a useful trait to have when trying to complete the reproduction quest. However, like many other traits used to attract mates, this is mostly useless for the vast majority of their playthrough, because of how it easily attracts attention to the player. In terms of mobility, the fastest piranha builds are capable of reaching bursts of 25 miles per hour, which is quite good when considering their competition. This doesn't mean that piranhas are invincible though, because caimans, one of the biggest nightmares for these players, are capable of swimming at 30 miles per hour, so maneuverability is also critical for the piranha. For life levels, piranhas aren't exactly the biggest fish in the game. The largest piranha build still playable in the Anthropocene is the 28cm black piranha, but there are ancient species of these fish even larger such as the Mega Piranha. Okay, so now that we have analyzed the Piranha build's base stats, let's look at their special abilities. The Piranha possesses two special abilities, Bark and Blood Sense. First of all, their bark. Piranhas are capable of making barking sounds as a means of intimidation, using muscles attached to their swim bladders. This bark, coupled with their fearsome reputation, can help deter humans, but it isn't the most effective defensive intimidation when faced with other builds because unlike some other intimidation moves, the bark is only intimidating when your opponent isn't expecting it, which means that without their fearsome reputation, the piranha's bark isn't effective against non-piranha players. The second special ability of the piranha is blood sense. Like sharks, piranhas can sense blood in the surrounding water, and in addition to this, piranhas are also sensitive to noise and splashing, two nice perks to have when trying to find falling loot such as fruits, nuts or insects. Both of these abilities are very useful to piranhas, and combined with their other stats, piranhas can be quite a formidable build. Finally, we have the most famous ability of the piranha, 
their shoaling. As I mentioned previously, shoaling is already a good strategy for keeping individual piranhas safer from enemies, but when coupled with the piranha's bite, the offensive capability of this trait is terrifyingly effective at skeletonizing much larger builds in mere minutes. Piranhas are exceptionally efficient during feeding frenzies. In these situations, whenever one piranha bites off a piece of loot, they immediately withdraw allowing the next piranha to come and bite off another piece of loot. These players will continuously rotate like this in and out unbelievably quickly until there is nothing but bones left. This makes it incredibly easy for shoals of piranhas to devour any player that gets in their path, but contrary to popular belief, piranhas only become the scary when there is a shortage of other loot such as plants and insects, which are their main food choices. When you learn about this fact, you suddenly realize that the piranha isn't as overpowered as most of the evolution life community believes. So, where does the piranha rank on the tier list? While they do have some decent base stats and special abilities, they're essentially a glass cannon mobbing build, which isn't a good combination. A piranha feeding frenzy is not nearly as coordinated as a pack hunter attack, and there isn't an equal division of loot either. It's basically a free-for-all, which means that piranhas aren't good solo builds or teamers. This, combined with their lower individual base stats, makes piranhas a C-tier build that needs to either boost their individual viability or learn to work together more efficiently as a unit rather than a mob. In fact, to ruin the image of a disciplined shoal of these players even further, piranhas have been known to kill and eat their own teammates when in desperate need for food, which means that piranha shoaling really only works when all the players are getting something out of it. The instant there is a shortage of food, everything descends into chaos. Which build would you like to see on the channel next? Let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button with a piranha and subscribe to my channel. Share this video with all your Cayman friends on social media. Thanks for watching and just to let you know the most aggressive species of piranha is the red-bellied piranha.